board already and also she was on time so we thank her for that so at this point i would like to hear from the civic champions because we don't really have time i would like to hear from the civic champions briefly what their expectations for this session is so i'm going to start with caroline so caroline what is your expectation for today's learning session for today we are going to be looking at project implementation and planning so it's very important that sorry um project implementation and planning so it's very important that um um we know your expectations for today's learning session so let's go over to caroline so what is your expectation today how to you know plan your project and how to implement it so what do you expect from project implement project planning and implementation let's hear from you Caroline just left. All right, over to you, Pascal. What's your expectation for today's learning session? We are looking at project planning and implementation. So what's your expectation for today's learning session? Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, everyone. So my um expectation for the session today is simple. I just want to advance my understanding of project management and uh, of course project planning and then management in the social space so i just hope the session will be able to broaden my understanding of of that and if that happens then my expectation will be met completely thank you very much all right thank you very much charity over to you good morning everyone my apologies that i joined late net i was having network issues so my expectation would be to learn strategies on how to on how to better implement my projects in the civic development Thank you very much. That's well noted. Okay, so Caroline, if you can hear me, let's get to know your expectations for today's learning session on project planning and implementation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to our facilitator. Um, I just want to gain more insight on project planning and strategies to implement them. That's all. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. So without wasting any more time, I'm going to be introducing our facilitator. facilitator. So please look at your screen and get a very big grasp of who we have on board. Also, okay, so we have um, Victoria Oladipo. She holds a bachelor's and master's degree in political science and international relations. She's dedicated to enhancing citizens' understanding of politics and governance. At Faith Foundation, she supports research and policy through seminars and dialogues. She founded Land Politics NG to provide accessible political education. Her work has appeared in the Republic Journal, Document Women, and Sisterly HQ. Currently, she contributes to Very Africa on politics and policy. So you're highly welcome. We are so happy to have you on board. We don't take your presence here for granted, and we strongly believe that we're going to be learning a whole lot from you. You're welcome, Victoria. The floor is all yours. Please, let's do well to make welcome our facilitator. Thank you very much, Ruth. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm excited to be here because, of course, everything that is going to develop and the civic space in Nigeria is something that everybody needs to be in. But please, let me know if you can hear me. That. Yes, we can hear you. All right, all right. Thank you very much, Ruth. Thank you. So, um, I'll be sharing my screen now, and and we are going to take 
to dive into what um this entire we are going to take a dive into what this entire subject of discussion is. Right. So before I begin, I would just really like to know I would like this class to be as interactive as possible so that um, I'm not the only one doing the talking and we are just looking. So I would really like to know when we think of project planning, what um, exactly comes to, what is the first thing that comes to our mind. So um, if you can, you can just raise your hand and unmute to speak. Sorry, is nobody speaking? Can, can you hear me? Hi, we can hear you, but it's okay. a bit uh, faint, like your voice oh, is not really audible. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, is this much better? Yes, we can hear you. Please, the Civic Champions, this is an interactive session. Yeah, please, let's talk. Please, I would really love if we could, like, respond and let me know so that I don't feel like I'm speaking to myself, just me, right? So thank you very much again. I was asking if what comes to mind when we think about um, a project or when we want to plan a project, what is the very first thing that comes to mind? Okay, Pascal. Okay, um, so for me, if we're thinking of organizing, I mean, planning a project, the very first, so many things comes to mind. So I don't know if I'll be able to identify which is first. Okay. But then I think planning, planning is always the very first thing after you've identified what kind of project it is that you want to do, where you want to do it, who and who are involved and all of that. So which again is also part of the planning now that I'm yes. talking about. So I think it's to sit down and do all of this now uh, before you start taking into account other things now that need to be brought on board for the project to be successful. And then again, right. you have to delegate some people, uh, maybe form a committee to lead that particular project. And then within the committee, various aspects of the project are now delegated to different persons to you know see to or maybe take charge of uh, and all of that. And then if all of them could do their own bid, manage the various areas given to them, then eventually the project becomes um, successful. So um, that's that for me. OK, you are not wrong at all. And everything you've mentioned is just a part of project planning right you cannot plan a project if you do not even identify the kind of project that you want to plan you if you do not know what you want to do so you can't just wake up in the morning and say Idea, right and at the back of my head i'm already thinking this is the result is going to generate and when you are thinking of the results in that way you are thinking of how much this um, project is going to bring to you not in terms of cash like in terms of the kind of impact it's going to have on the people that it is designed for but at the end of this day we now tend to see that these things don't always work like that because we have this awesome idea in our head like, if you tap somebody and I say, what do you do? What are you going to do to curb electoral violence by the next election? Or how can you put tech in place for the next election? Just like a random citizen. The person has the entire 
oh, this is how they are going to make tech work for the next elections or anything. But at the end of the day, you realize that those things by our mouth, by our head, or in our brains, do not necessarily translate to a um, very good results if you do not plan like effectively for it, right? So as civic champions, the kind of things you are, you are planning project for a unique set of people, Nigerians, right? And there are many things that are actually that actually affect your project planning. It depends on where you are as a Nigerian. If you are planning a project in Nigeria, I am in Lagos, Nigeria. You know, like you know that the cost of things are going to be a lot. Those are like the kind of problems you are going to meet. If you are planning, and you know, um, Lagos is an urban area. What type of um, projects we actually go to that place then i recognize that um you guys are from the southeast there is also the part of where we are thinking of the unique cultural effects of these things that will affect your project so it's not just by saying oh have a project um, i have this idea and i want it to come into fruition and um you, you just get to it you don't just get to it from that ideation phase right is um how you begin project planning. So I'll be moving my slides are a little, but I'll be talking a lot because I really do not like preparing slides anyways. So we'll be talking about project planning, the importance, project planning processes, identifying resources and budget planning, right? So for project planning, I define project planning as an important step where goals are set, resources are found, Tax are planned and plans are made to help the project team from the beginning to the end. So your project plan obviously has to have like objective, your budget, your resources, the workflow, everything from beginning to the end of it. So if you say that you want to start, if you want to do, um, okay, let me just use this um civic leadership um program to explain i'm very sure that the team had like an entire plan on how this will go your facilitators reaching out to the facilitators because i remember i've reached out for over a month like those are the kind of things that are involved in project planning so from the beginning of this your program to the end of the program i'm very sure the team has decided oh this is what is going to go if there can be lapses it doesn't have to be like a very direct project plan but there can be lapses in the um, along the way. But the major important thing is that when you have a project plan, it's easy for you to um to manage those lapses. It's easy for you to have like those lapses as far as they're in line with your objective. So the, here are some of the importance of project planning. And we have that it helps form steps needed for a project to be successful, plays a role in setting project goals and um objective and it ensures timely delivery of projects sorry that was a mistake it ensures timely delivery of projects like i've been explaining before that there are if you are if you have an idea the idea don't just stay if you do not work towards the idea to fruition and you are just saying oh this is in my head planning requires a lot of things it requires you doing um certain things that um in your head, you don't do, you will not do them. Like and Pascal mentioned, you set up a team, you do all those things. Those things are like the kind of plans that you have to make to ensure certain delivery of this project. Because you can't just even um, you really cannot um take delivery of this project if you do not plan very well. So in my next slide, I said um. I'm going to talk about the project planning process. And these are some of the things that I really do um, enjoy. I, I This is one of the things I really enjoy when planning something to be a project. And as in my case, um, the organization I run, it's um, planning a course delivery for whether partners or even for ourselves. There, There's a lot of things that you need to define. And what would majorly look like a planning process is um a concept note in um in a very large scale. When I say concept note, a concept note is like it identifies everything you are going to do in that project. And I think that is a very, very good start if you are starting a project. Um 
you you have your introduction your background to your project what did that idea that is in your head that you say okay this is what you really want to do especially when you own your thing it's better you just put everything down have a concept note concept note contains or oh, what's the time what's the date that you are trying to um, achieve this particular project what's the time frame what is the um, it can also include your budget and everything but that idea, the concept notes can be edited over time, over time. But that idea, the very best thing is to put it down into a document. And that document should be able to guide you to actually plan your project um, in the very best way. So the first step of planning a project is majorly to define your objectives. And, um, okay, say, for example, you want to do a sensitization for people and this is going to be the project we are going to be using throughout the period of this session. So I want you to have it at the back of your head that at the end of when I finish um, facilitating this session, we are going to plan the projects together and we are going to come up with ideas um, that we need to get it done. We will identify resources and we'll come up with a sample budget for that project. And I believe that um, we'll be able to do that at the end of this um class or session so firstly you need to define your objectives your objectives are what are the goals what um what are the things that are going to there's really nothing you can do there's really no project you can actually have without um, a definite objective so what are you trying to do and the um projects are saying we are going to plan um a community engagement for a certain location in the southeast right so and I'm going to get to the point because I've not lived in the Southeast. So you are going to tell me, oh, these are the kind of things that could occur within the certain environment that um, we are going to use to plan this our own project as a result of this session. And we say that um, the, your objective will actually define in detail what the project goes are and the limits within which it will work. So your project is not just, um, your project is not just there right we know now that we want to plan a community engagement session in the um in a location in the southeast i um we don't know the location yet but we know that in the southeast we want to plan a community engagement session um what will not be the goal of this session right and you know the way look at the entire debacle of local government autonomy between the supreme court the federal government and state governments we can see that a lot of state governments are not receptive to the fact that um they want to actually give local government autonomy so there is and this community engagement session we want it to drive more people to participate at the grassroots we want people to participate in um, at the grassroots. We want them to actually be very much involved in both elections and politics at the gra grassroots. So that is why we termed our project a community engagement session, right? So can somebody just tell me what would be the objective of this project? I really love replies and answers. Sorry, am I permitted to call names? No, I want another person. Um, Pascal mm -hmm. is not the only one here. Yes, yeah, so another person. Charity, are you trying to speak? Yeah, please, can you phrase the Okay, question? I said I that get we, the question. Are, we, we, want, we want to plan a project. Oh, I'm very sorry. We want to plan a project and the community engagement session in the southeast, right? And I've given like instances, a kind of background that oh, there's an entire debacle concerning local government autonomy between the Supreme Court, federal government, and Lagos M um, and um state governments generally. Some local some state governments do not want their they don't want to surrender autonomy to local governments like in its entirety but now we want people to participate at the grassroots levels 
and we want them to be very much involved in politics at the grassroots. So we are having a community engagement session. So this is just the background of this project that we are planning. So right now I'm asking what would be the clear objective of this project? Charity, did you get me? Okay. I think the clear objective, yeah, I got you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I think our clear objective is would be how to get these people to be involved um, in the community engagement that we are planning. At the end of it, how do we get these people to now be involved in the a phase of the Okay, I didn't get the last part, but you've been muted. Mas Pascal, do you okay? I want to hear what you have to say now. Okay, um, I think what I want to say is um a little bit in line with what charity mentioned. So okay. part of the objectives of this project would be to you know drive first of all to create a kind of enlightenment in the yeah. local community because you just mentioned what the supreme court has done i'm very sure yeah. a lot of people at the local government level are not even aware there was such proceeding in the first place let alone yeah. what the arrival of the proceeding eventually is so our objective would be to uh, drive a kind of enlightenment um, program first i mean to achieve enlightenment now at the grassroots level of such um um a supreme court ruling Mm -hmm. And when it comes to local government engagement with the state government and all of that. So if the people at the local government, I mean, local communities are now aware of such a thing happening, then it's easier for them on their own even to hold their own local government accountable when it comes to certain things they expect the local government to do and the local government has not done it. And if the local government now tells them, oh, the state government has not abided by the Supreme Court um, uh, ruling, then you could now see the effect within the local community so they can rise against the state government and get the state government to do something. So if one of the objectives of this project would be to um, enlighten the people at the local, I mean, at the grassroots level of what the Supreme Court has done, then the project would have been successful at the end. Then um, another objective could be to um, increase um, grassroots, uh, grassroots participation, I mean, local participation mm -hmm. now, of the people at the grassroots um, level with um, whatever it is that is happening um, within the local governments, um, within the wards, uh, within the um, constituencies or councils, uh, that people should be you know, more involved. And the only way they can be involved is if the very first objective has been achieved in a way that enlightenment has been created and they now know, oh, they have some rights now um, as against what it used to be before then, they could get more involved with the entire process. So I think those are just two objectives that could um, be very useful if they are achieved. Thank you very much, Pascal, for that extensive objective. And um, I saw in the comments that Victoria said our objective would be to introduce our plan or project to, the, to every stakeholders in the Southeast and how they can come in. This is a very important point in um, project planning that there you have um, you have to identify stakeholders and all that. But majorly, a, an objective is to talk about the goals and the limits with, within which it will work. And just like what Pascal said and what um, Charity had said before, we are going to first enlighten the people within the local community, which is number one goal. And number two is for us to drive grassroots participation within that um particular community that will be chosen regardless of what so which is actually very interesting in which is very much important in the, like starting your project plan now we've defined the objectives of what projects we want to do and next we need to see how does this work out like how do we make this work out how do we eventually put out that our projects become something very much tangible and something so i'll give an example of something i did when i was um a copper right i was um going to we are going to train children living in rural communities 
in Lagos, actually, as much as Lagos is urban, and I believe that we know that there are rural communities in Lagos. There are a lot of out of out of school children in Lagos, but we wanted to train them on things they would not learn in class. So say things like mental mathematics. We think of things like emotional intelligence, things that they will not learn within the four walls of their classroom. And I was in project lead for that project and. One of the things that Lagos being Lagos, right, is very, very hard for us to um, get some of the things. So it was important for us. I was I was not living in Lagos. I was planning this project from Ibado, right? And I wanted that project to um, actually succeed. And one of the things we got to do is to identify, like, one, who are our target audience? And those are part of the resources. How much do we need? Of course. You cannot plan a project with the, without thinking of how much you need to make that um, project a success. And we had to identify what location, what rural community exactly are we going to um do. Now we have a project, so we want to train, we want to create enlightenment for people living within grassroots, which is our first objective. Number two objective is for us to like encourage participation at grassroots levels. And now that we have these two objectives, we need to identify resources that will make these um, objectives actualize, right? So I'm going to be asking another person, Caroline, what type of resources do you think we need to drive our objective for this project? Hi, Caroline. Can you hear me? Oh, my God. Hi, Victoria. Sorry, it skipped at some point. Can you just come here? Okay. I, I said that now we have, like, objectives that we want to do for the community engagement session in a certain community in the Southeast, right? So now we are identifying resources. What kind of resources do you think we need to drive the objective of this project? That's the question. Okay, thank you so much. First, for a project like what um, we are to do in Enugu State, we need people. We need, uh, I think the first resource is people because we need to be able to penetrate certain, um, penetrate through certain places, and it's not some. It's not what money can do. We need people who are who who work or who have influence. Yeah, let me use the word. People who are influential to help us penetrate through those places, and then we we'll also require. Um, uh, let's say fonts, um, yeah, fonts, because sometimes we, um, aside um, people, um, people resource, human resource, we still need to like make the the whole process faster, and fonts are one of those ways to make it faster. So I think that's like what I think from my end. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't realize I've been muted. Okay, I was saying that people and money are the most important part of um of planning the projects. Of course, you need people, and of course, you need money. So you cannot just come up and say, "Oh, you have people." What type of people do you also have? Like, you need people that will drive your project. And in the case of community engagement, uh, this thing we know the way. Like at the grassroots levels, this thing can be the number of people you have to meet. And um, 
within certain locations and in um, your case um, in Enugu, like you know you have to meet sometimes you know these people have caretaker committees or they have local government chairpersons local council chairpersons also you have to reach out to these people because somehow you need the buy-in of these people to make your project like a success in the case of like a civic project that we are talking about right now and so um like Caroline said, we need people. We also need influential people. So your resources include people, say like volunteers that you are trying to reach out to, to um, help your project come alive. You also need money to actually drive your projects, right? And you also need things like technology, depends on what you are trying to do. You need to take pictures, you need to stream live. You need to like document this thing that you're actually doing in your community. You need technology for that. So that you just need random things at all, right? And that's why when it comes to project planning, we are going to talk about how we need to um in, in involved. We need we need to involve um like extra expenses for your project because you cannot even actually determine like how much things cost or how much people will cost in quotes, like if you are going to buy the services of people and all that. So we, for our next step, we need to identify resources that we need in project planning. And next up, we need to create the workflow, which is my very much important, and um, this is very much important in project planning for me. You have to create a workflow. And it's not just, People call it workflow, people call it a, a, a schedule on how things will run. But you have this big task you want to do. You want to set up a volunteer committee. You want to reach out to these people. So your workflow is going to involve what, what's the time span for this thing to get um, this thing. If this project is meant to be in October, let's say like October 1, 2024, and this is 18th of July, 2024, your workflow is going to put, this is what we are doing first. This is what we are doing next. And this is the timeline for us to get these things done, right? So you have to make a schedule for the project that includes when tax and goals will begin and end. So you add, your workflow will be like, I will like to say a to-do list majorly, right? This is what you are going to do to, from the beginning to the end that will make this um, project a success. I, mean, I don't know if you understand me, so say for this community engagement session we are going to have, I'm going to speak to um, call on that person. So what, what do you think um, the workflow will look like? That is um, Victoria Maji. Can you, I, can you speak to what the workflow will look like for this um, dummy project that we are doing here? Hi, Victoria. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay. She said that we should set up a team of volunteers and delegate tax, which is very much important, right? Okay. She also said cut visits. So our workflow is going to involve us going to, um, talking about volunteers, delegating tasks, and um, cut CVC to where we need to visit and all that, right? Because it's important that we know that in this um project plan, in this sort of project that we are doing, of course, we are going to have a lot of cut visits, visits um traditional leaders visit associations within the community because of course we are doing a grassroots project so we have to set up a team of volunteers that get each of the tasks we are going to give to them um what well, what are the what do we aim to achieve at the end of those taxes and um, those tasks i mean so that we know that this is exactly what we are doing this is what we um hope to achieve for this for the tax right so 
after you create this project and you make the workflow, you make these things, um, you make these things come and we've already achieved according to what the workflow has given us, right? That way it can translate into your major projects, right? So you've created the workflow now, you've told, you've reached out to the people, you've gotten feedback, you've gotten a venue, you've gotten a time. We already have the date, 1st of October. And now you have to also think of, and, and this is also when we talk about resources, talking about publicity, how you are going to gather the people to come together for your community engagement session, because it's, um, it can be very, very hard to gather people together. And that's why I really, really buy the idea of courtesy visits that Victoria suggested. And I'll just tell you like a sample project that I just um, also was, I was involved in, but from far away, right? So we had this entire, um, we had this entire plan to do a session in the North and we wanted to involve all the members of that local government and community. Apparently, we found out that the, um, the how will I put it, the king, not an entire king, but the royal, a royal palace, anyways, in that community, they usually have like a monthly session with the king, right? And so, in our own case, we wanted to just reach out and tell them that um, we are coming to your community to actually teach them. But it required us to like go to the king's palace several times. We had to visit the youth leader and we had to even set our projects on the day of the community meeting, right? And which was which was actually like led to a um, huge turnout because a lot of people came, they would always listen to the king, right? So that way we planned our projects in a way that, oh, the entire community was there. We didn't even lose anyone, like everyone was there. They gave us a slot to speak and all that. So, and that is why I really buy the idea of paying courtesy visits and including it in your workflow, especially depending on the kind of project you are trying to carry it out. And if it um, involves this dummy project that we are working on together, right? It requires a lot of courtesy visits, it requires a lot of getting um, traditional rulers, getting even government officials, local government chairpersons, to buy into your idea, to make them understand that this thing that you are doing is not um is not to their detriment at all, right? God bless you. Maybe the local government chairman is trying and the election and you do this in partnership um partnership with him is also a very, very good thing, right? Because um the major thing is just to um ensure that you are achieving the goal of this project which is to create enlightenment one and to make sure that there is civic participation in the grassroots. So I would like to pause here for a bit and want to hear feedback and questions that um, anyone has on this call before we go on to the next slide. I know. No question would mean that everybody understands what I've been saying. Okay, Pascal, thank you. Okay, I don't have a question yet because I think the okay. session is going down to its very uh, various detail. So it's just, um, you said feedback also, maybe I should just give feedback. Yes, yes, feedback. Okay, so I've identified them. Um, that's in project planning now. The resources, the human resources specifically now that is usually needed comes in three phases. So the phase one of the human resources needed now are people who are to implement the project. Yeah. So maybe it was a, a singular man's conception that, oh, so so and so needs to be done in, in so so and so place. So in your bid of preparing these projects now, 
after you've conceptualized what the project is going to look like, one of the uh, segments of the human resources that you would need are people who would implement the projects. And I think this understanding now is very practical um, in this very project that we are implementing now. The organization NGU SDGs, they've identified us now as the first set of uh, these human resources people who would implement the project. So the yeah. next um, people now still on the human resource um, need is people the project will be implemented on. And that's why they chose um, Enugu State, um, Enugu East Senatorial District. And even in the kind of um, a kind of Enugu East Senatorial District, there are still specific local governments they've chosen out of all the local governments in this. territorial district. So that is for every project. That's the people the project will be implemented on. So when they've identified that resource, it now helps them to narrow down the needs of that. To be able to fit into that particular resource implemented on. Then I also got two things that can make this project successful. And that's where the stakeholder for me now falls in. And any other person that can, because it's not money that does everything eventually. There are some certain persons you may link up with, and yeah. then they can provide an aid that money uh, may not give you, or you would have spent heavily to get to the success of that project. So um, that becomes now the third for me, that becomes the third set of um, people you need when it comes to human resource needs in any project. Thank you very much, Pascal. I really enjoyed this feedback, Andrea. Like quite the number of things that I see that you've picked from what have been said so far. I would really love to hear from one other person before um, we move on. Okay, I think I'll call on somebody. Um, Charity, do you want to speak? Sorry, I just came back now. My network kicked me off, so I don't know what I'm supposed to be speaking on. Okay. I was asking um, feedback from what's, um, and or questions from what has been said so far. Okay, so far, I don't have any questions so far. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Charity. Um, okay, so we'll be moving on, right? I'm going to skip one slide and I'll get back to it later. But then, um, for now, we are going to be talking about identifying resources, right? Um, type of resources that we needed for a project. We have personnel. That's people like we've been saying. We have um. We also have materials and equipment. We have technology and software. We have facilities and infrastructure. We have budget and funding. Then we have external resources, right? So when it comes to personnel, um, with what Pascal already explained, you need team members, people. We are setting up a team and identifying your resources. You also need um contractors somehow, people that you can give out this um. Um, some of the tasks that you've assigned that oh is beyond your team like you can actually give them um, give them out to those people then we have materials and equipment like you know we cannot even say that oh because we are doing a very professional stuff we cannot talk about um the materials and equipment that we use depends on what even down to chairs right and you are planning a project that involves you using um, whether an outer space or an inner space. You need to budget and plan for um. We need to budget and plan for chairs or just any material. Or just think about the tiniest thing that you are going to be doing in this project and think about how you would um, use them. Right, those things are resources. And we also have technology and software. What kind of um 
technology are you going to use for your resources? What um, as your resources, I mean, what do you need laptops? Do you need um computers? Anything at all. Just think about it in terms of technology. Then we have facilities and infrastructure, right? Are you having it in a building? How do you have to get this um facilities? How would you need them? Then we have budget and funding. This budget and funding is meant to be like the overarching of this entire um, um resource, let's say resource box, right? Because when you are budgeting and when you are planning a project, it is more important that oh, this you put your budget in place. You plan for your budget. You plan for your project, I mean, and there's a budget. Regardless of whether you have the funds or not, right? That's why we are going to talk about budget planning like after this. Regardless of whether you have the funds or not, you are going to budget. And you are going to put um you are going to put a time lapse, um, I said a timeline, a particular price for each of the things you are budgeting for. So whether you have just 10 naira in your account or you have 1 million naira in your account, you budget for everything you are going to use for your project. And so you budget for your resource, your personal, for all the type of resources that you're going to use. Um, you also acknowledge right the number of free resources you get to use in your budget. So you put, okay, let's say they give you the all for free. You put the cost price of that all, but you know that you get it for free, but that is still part of your budget, right? So you've identified your resources now, which is very much important, right? Since you've identified that, oh, you need 50 people, 50 volunteers. How do you get them? How are you going to um, bring them on board? Then next, you need materials and equipment, anything that you're using at all, just basic, and you need technology and software. You've identified all these things. You've written them down, right? In the case of um, these dummy projects that we are trying to, we are trying to um, do, then we have, you now want to budget and fund for those projects. But before we go there, we also have external resources, right? You know, the vendors you are going to buy um, stuff from, what are the things you want to use? The vendors, then the people you are going to actually consult with for the success of your um, projects, they are also like part of the resources you are going to use. So resources should capture every human and everything that you will use to achieve the goal of your project, All right? So every human, in any form and everything that will be used in achieving the goal of this project is like a resource and so this is um this will lead us to budget planning right and i somewhat designed a sample budget plan right it's i'm not very good with <laughs> with a uh, this but this is a sample budget plan i want to see if i can increase this for you to see a sample budget plan right mm, okay I, be, I just believe you can you should be able to see my screen so i have like the expense that's like the expense you want to say like your expense is the resource now and the description what exactly is that expense for right what is the unit price of that expense and what is the um quantity but the quantity, okay, say for your project, you need, um, let's say, I'm trying to think of the best possible thing you, you can need. Say you need like t-shirts that you want to give to members of the community, right? And you have the expense, the expense is a material resource. Then the description is um, a t-shirt, say for example. I don't know if this is a universal way of our budget are done, but this is how I do my budget anyways, so that we don't say that this is, um, a universal way of our budget is done, right? So the description will be there that, oh, you want to get so-so amount of T-shirts for so-so amount of people, right? Then the unit price will be how much we want T-shirts cost. Let's say one T-shirt is going to cost like 5,000 naira. Then the quantity, you want to do 200 T-shirts. Then the amount will be 200 times the um, 5,000 naira. That's like... um a millionaire in amount, right? So you keep filling up this budget plan and 
you keep adding it up. Most um most budgets are designed on Excel, right? And I don't I want to just see by show of ends, by show of virtual ends, like how how much people are very good with simple calculations on Excel because Excel is quite wide. So um simple calculations on Excel. I want to see like how I'm just by show of virtual hands. Does that mean nobody knows how to like create budgets in like in this very simple form already? Please, I would really love feedback and replies. Hi, Victoria. You want us to make example of... of uh, no, the... no, no. I'm just I'm asking that can we do like basic and simple calculations like on Excel because most budgets are prepared on Excel, Excel sheets. So I just want to know by show of virtual hands or just say something in the chat and say, yes, I can. No, I can't. Oh, oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Thank you, Pascal. There's a not yet option. So what I will do is I'll stop sharing the screen and we are going to um, we are going to create a sample budget right now, right? So um, I will share an Excel sheet for us to look at and we'll um, continue from there. I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, please, can you let me know if you can see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, so we are going to, um, we are just going to be creating a dummy budget, right? Because, um, we, and I really love responses, please, so that I'm, I'm very sure that everybody's getting me of um, what we are doing, right? Right. So, um, what 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 will be our very first expense so that we can just have it on this sample budget? Let's just use the t-shirt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, which is a material resource, right? Um, expense. We have t-shirts. We have unit price at five thousand euro, right? Then we have quantity of two hundred. Right. Let's leave the amount. We'll come back to it. Okay. Another expense, please. The hall. Okay. Oh, Let's yeah. say facilities. So we have the all for the project. 
we have what is the unit price? Let's say the whole goes at 200,000 euro, right? And we want just one. And let's leave the amount, anyways. So, um, another one, another one. What about food? The projectors, I think that's that's gonna be major. Sorry, what did you say? I said, we need to talk about the training materials, that's the projectors and the sound systems. If it doesn't the, come with the, the what? I don't know if okay, you heard Okay, if me. they don't, yes, if they don't come the with projector the projector and the sound system, if it doesn't come. Okay. Um, the let's say the unit price for the sound system is let's say like fifty thousand era, like depends on the distance fifty thousand era. Maybe we need um then we need one. Then we also have projector. Maybe we need to rent that one twenty thousand era very least we need one and let's say we need to feed people feeding at each person that will be coming like we have 200 people as distant we have 700 naira quantity to 200 then let's say we are going to give them like certificates or something for attending the distant and we are going to have maybe a certificate is printed for 200 naira and we have the um, total amount of 200, right? Now, after you've done this and all this, the next thing that we need to do right now is to create a miscellaneous, a, a space for miscellaneous. And why do we create a space for miscellaneous expenses? Because we think we know that we need extra expenses at the Despite our budgeting, despite how we planned for it, we just do need extra expenses like at the end of the day, right? So we say, okay, we are budgeting for that one goes straight to the amount, maybe like one million error in extra expenses, right? So um Excel is a thorough calculation platform. So we are um, we are going to, it, it helps your calculation easily. So I want to do something for basic Excel users like us. So I'm just going to tell you, oh, this is what I do when um, I'm using Excel like this, right? So um, normally there is a formula so that is meant to, you, um, you can format your sheets to give you the total amount of this, C, this is C2 times D2, right? So everything is just going to do the total amount of C, C3 times D3. C, so the formula is going to be here. So it's going to be equals to, sorry, C1, C2, D2. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sir, I've mixed up my formulas. I think I've missed up my formula. So we are going to just um make this. This is one million in this thing. This is two hundred thousand. This is 
50,000 Naira. This is 20,000 Naira. And this is um, on 40,000 Naira. Um, yeah, on 40, and this 400,000 Naira. So in your total, You have a sum equals to sum sum e two e eight. So this is the one. Okay. Sorry, this is just a very crash. It's very crash at the same time, very crash Excel stuff, right? So um please let me know if we can if we get what I did here. Please just pick up and let me know if you get what I did here so that I can just go over it and explain again. I'm not hearing any um or seeing any responses, I mean. I think you just need to go over the total, the total again. Yes, the total. What I did is, is an Excel formula, right? So on Excel sheets, basically, when you have like, I'm not very good with accounting stuff, right? So when you have like um amounts that you want to add together, instead of doing that mathematics in your head, right? On the total, this is E, right? This um column is E, right? And this rule, is two, right? So um this is this is also the last column. This is also the last column for um this basic sum we want to do, right? And so we'll come together, we need to add all the amounts here together. On this sum, I'm just going to do it in the next um, row. We have a formula equals to sum of E to E to colon E eight uh, no, no, no. colon Did you get that too, Pascal? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm just looking at the figures. Okay, yes. Because there's a place we have a million naira already. So what we have on the sum is less than the entire. So I don't know, maybe we're missing one or two columns. Okay. I think wait, sorry, I'm trying to confirm. It's correct. That's it too. Oh shit. It's, it's actually correct. This is one million and ten thousand euro. Okay, okay, just because of the commas. Okay, I think you're in order. Yes, it's, be, it's because of the commas. Sorry, sorry, that's why I said this is very crash and quite crass at the same time. But I just wanted you to understand, like, the concept, yes. What do you say? Yes, I think the concept is the major goal and I've gone through yes. the concept. Yes, if there is going to be like a very good class to learn Excel, I'm not the very best person to learn Excel um, from actually because I am still growing in my knowledge of it. But anyways, if I want to prepare a budget, I use an Excel sheet and instead of I do the calculations like this way, just this way that I just showed you now. So I just want to believe that I'm... Um, 
people get me and I've not shown myself as a very bad teacher with this Excel stuff. So anyways, we'll go back to our slides. We'll be, I'll be, I'll be done teaching very soon. So we'll go back to our slides so that um, I can quickly round up and So, okay, so after like we've created a sample budget plan too, in that case, so that again, and I can share my slides with you so that you can just have that page for, um, sorry. So steps to budget planning, we have defined the scope of the project, you identify the resources you need, like we've done, we've identified the resources, you estimate the cost of these resources. We did that also. And um, we also allocate the budget, like, okay, how much is going to this place? How much is going to that place and all that. We have a space for miscellaneous. Then this particular thing is the slide I skipped before, monitoring and evaluation, right? So even in your project planning, the overarching thing is for you to see that you've actually achieved your goal and all that and that you can, um, the overarching thing is that you can actually monitor how your goal gets to, and um, where it gets to and where it heads to. So we have the monitoring and evaluation part of it, right? You have, um, in monitoring, you have to see that continuous, you know, our goal is that these people actually actively engage in um, grassroots politics, like voting in local government elections and all that. In monitoring, we are going to have to follow up with um, the community to see how they are participating in grassroots activities. How, um, let's say in the first community town hall meeting, they have maybe 10 people came. And we, the next thing for us to ensure that 20 people are showing up in the next town meeting, see the entire community is coming for the town meeting. We also use key performance indicators. In, in the case of this uh, dummy project, we want to know that what are the key performance indicators, what are the indicators that um, um, we we'll use to measure and we we'll use to monitor people doing their PVCs more, which is um, a KPI. We can use people attending town hall meetings, the number of people that show up to vote in an election. These are actually KPIs that we can use to determine um, and monitor our projects, this particular dummy project that we are using so that we don't conflict issues. Then we have to identify problems. You cannot um, monitor without identifying, okay, what was the problem? Why did people not show up for this? Why did people not show up for that? Then you also have to monitor the efficient use of resources, right? Many of the things you will get, you probably not use all of them, and there are some that you will need extra to use, right? But monitoring and evaluation helps you to monitor the efficient use of your resources. How well did you use the sound system? How well did you spend money? How well do you use the people that volunteer? How well did you use your connections to get things done, to even offset things from your budget and all that? Then there is evaluation. It evaluates, and um, this is a process that evaluates a project design, your implementation, and outcome. So when you are done planning your project, of course, it translates into implementation. Since you now have a workflow of how it's going to go, your project does not end the day the project ends. Your the project is done. Your project does not necessarily end till when you've monitored and you've evaluated the impact of this project on um, the respective, res um, respective recipient. So it could be creating evaluation questions, maybe creating something like questionnaires to the communities and giving them, okay, what are their thoughts, interviews, focus group discussions and all that. You can col um, collect data, of course, to see from the questions you've asked them, or what are the problems that they've they encounter when they are trying to participate in grassroots activities and all that? So you also analyze the report. Most of these things are done by professionals like that actually do data analysis. They analyze, okay, this is the result of why this thing is, and according to what these people have answered, then you now actually report your findings. 
what are the things that you found from this evaluation process that you've done from the community you've gone to, then you now implement, implement oh, what can be done better, right? And you can only know what can be done better if you effect effectively monitor and you evaluate that project. And so for your next project, know that, oh, this is the kind of problems we encountered in this previous project. And this is the um thing that we need to improve upon. These are the things that we need to um change and do better for the next project. So that will be all from my decks today. Um very much open to questions and feedback. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much, Victoria. We are so happy to have you. And I would say that it was such an enlightening session. Yes, it was so great and very practical. So basically, before I make further comments, I would like to know from the civic champions, do you have any questions? Pascal, Charity, do you have any question? Okay, so I don't have any question from my end. Thank you so much, Victoria. This was really self-explanatory and um, I love the practical aspect of it. So thank you so much. A lot of insights. Thank you so much for the amazing stuff. All right, that's fantastic. Pascal, over to you. Any questions, okay. comments? Uh, it's just to still thank uh, Victoria for her time and then facilitating the entire session. I wanted to point out again this issue of miscellaneous. Maybe she would have a diverse opinion. I know we've dealt on it before in one of our previous sessions as why um, the difficulties we have when you include miscellaneous. So if it's, for example, a funded project or maybe something you are hoping to get assistance from maybe these community stakeholders to be able to implement or the government, as the case may be, I mean, government representatives or lawmakers, as this particular case is now. So when you have um, a miscellaneous, for example, it passes a message that, oh, we don't want you to include anything that looks like miscellaneous. If you have a budget, you have a budget. So if it is not a budget, it is not, there is nothing like miscellaneous. So I know we've talked about it before, but I just want to hear maybe what she, I mean, Victoria, now what you have to say um, with respect to that particular miscellaneous being on your budget. Okay, thank you very much, Pascal. So in ca in cases of um, funded projects or anything, just you will have to, and this is not like padding in any form, right? But you will have to just increase the amount of things that you know that you probably need miscellaneous expenses on. Say, for example, on logistics purposes, even some people will tell you to even actually define logistics, right? you get they will ask you to tell you to write whether it's transport or anything at all but you just have to just increase the amount if they are not asking you for if they want you to remove the miscellaneous expense that you have to spend right i do not have a definite um this is how this thing will go on what miscellaneous is but it just depends on like funded projects partners what do they want and if it's a personal this thing you can actually just dissipate your entire miscellaneous expense and split it to um, specific expenses. So you need, you probably will need extra in renting chairs. You just add the extra money, you put it there instead of just having miscellaneous. I, I don't know if that answers. That's okay. Thank you very much. All right. So thank you very much, Victoria. Our eyes are deeply opened on the process to plan and implement a project. So for me, one basic thing I gained is that in project planning, it's very, very important to know the reason why you want to embark on a project. If there are no clear objectives, it simply means we are heading for um, failure. But from this session, I understand that project planning is key. It helps in timely delivery of a project. It also helps us set our objectives and our goals. And coming to budget planning, this one can't even be overemphasized because if you don't plan your budget, you waste your resources. And at the end of the day, 
you might not be able to achieve the set goals. So thank you very much once again, Victoria. We deeply appreciate your presence in this session. We also deeply appreciate the knowledge you've shared with us. We are so grateful. Thank you very much. So at this point, I'm going to be bringing the learning session to a close. For the civic champions, do well to check up with your handbook to know the next thing to do. So um, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you for joining. Bye. Thank you, Ruth. All right. Um, Ruth, please. Um, I have a question, or maybe a demand. I don't know if she's there. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, please. The slide for the, the last learning session, please. I'm here to get the slide, and I'll really appreciate if I can get the slide. Okay, it's okay. I'll make that available. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye, everyone.